So obviously a big part of what makes the Lumitone such a game changer is its ability to visualize alternative and microtonal tunings. As a more traditional composer, I've been mostly focused on what it can do for the 12 notes of modern Western music. And that in itself has been blowing my mind. But as I've been diving more into how it works with microtonality, I feel like a whole new room in my brain has been unlocked. The options for creativity here seem pretty unparalleled, you know, at least from what I've seen. So to start off slow, I'm gonna take a little peek at one of the more popular microtonal layouts, the 31 EDO mapping. So I know I use the word infinite a lot when I describe the Lumitone's potential, but it's for a good reason. The more I learn about this instrument, the more dazzling it becomes. In my limited experience with microtonality, it seems like the 31 EDO mapping would be a good place to start when learning these concepts. A lot of these videos we're doing are geared towards folks who are just getting into or are curious about microtonality like myself. So the hope is we will learn together as we go. But I am gonna be inviting folks far more schooled in this subject than myself to join me in future videos. So make sure you do that YouTube thing and hit that subscribe button down there so you'll be notified when they come out. But for now, if there's any microtonalists out there who are watching, please feel free to leave anything down there in the comments to help us out along the way. We're all thirsty for knowledge and there's a lot of different perspectives on how this all works. But I'm gonna first take a baseline look at some of the aspects of this layout, coming at it like the newbie that I am. All right, so as I've said in previous videos, the 31 EDO mapping splits the octave up by 31 notes instead of just 12. All the notes here are still an equal distance and sense from each other, hence we use the term EDO standing for equal divisions of the octave. You may have heard the term tet or equal temperament. These terms all mean the same thing. So running through the octave now gives us these 31 notes. a lot of notes. Luckily, the Lumitones layout makes it far less complicated to understand than you may think. It's using the Bosun Cat Wilson layout, which I did do a previous video on, so if you're not familiar with it, I totally suggest you go check out that video first. It'll give you a really good idea of how this mapping takes advantage of its power. We'll put a link to that video down in the description. Okay, so as the name suggests, this mapping equally divides the notes throughout the octave. So for every step you take, you increase by 38.71 cents instead of just the 100 cents in the 12 tone tuning. A huge benefit to this is that it makes some of the intervals much closer to the pure tuning of just intonation. So what is just intonation? Well, that is a whole other video unto itself. But in a nutshell, in JI tuning, when you strike any given key, it produces a series of harmonic overtones, all of which are notes that are in the same key of that fundamental note you struck. This is just a amazing phenomenon of nature. Excuse my language. So if you play a C, the third harmonic up in pitch would be the perfect fifth, and the fifth harmonic in the series would be the major third, and so on and so forth into infinity, or so I assume. But the point is the relationship between those intervals say from the root note to the major third, are at its truest pure tuning. These intervals are not equally spaced from each other. You know, we do sacrifice that purity in tuning when we equally divide the intervals. Though by equally dividing, we do get the added bonuses of being able to switch keys and freely transpose, and you know, not needing a different instrument every time we wanna play in a different key. But with the Lumitone, we can retain the convenience of an equally divided octave while getting some of those intervals closer to the just tuning of the harmonic series. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So if we look at the interval from the root to the major third in 31 EDO, even without dealing with microtonal notes, we already have a different tuning. 
This might not seem very different, but let's take a look at where the third actually sits. So I've got Piano Tech here tuned in 31 EDO over here. And in this Piano Tech, we have it tuned to just the normal 12 tone tuning. So we've got this handy wheel here, which shows us where each of the notes come in scent wise with the top point here representing C. Now in regular 12 tone tuning, the major third comes in at about 400 cents above the root note. And here in 31 EDO, we can see our major third is coming in at 387.1 cents. Human hearing can hear around a difference of five or six cents. A lot of folks say that even when you're playing a normal chord in 31 EDO, say like a D minor, it sounds like it's got a bit more of a pure resonance than if you play it in 12 EDO. You can hear the difference, but it's so subtle. But in the context of a performance, it can add a little edge to what you're doing, even without microtonal notes. Let's hear them both again back to back. So yeah, this already opens up a ton of creative differences from the standard tunings we're all used to, but now let's take a look at where some of those brand new notes live. So these blue keys here represent our naturals, the light green keys represent our flats, and the pink keys represent our sharps. But now check this out. The darker greens here represent our double flats, and the darker blues here represent our double sharps. And as we move to the outer edge vertically, we have repeating note patterns. Okay, so we've got both flats and sharps. What's up with that? In the 12 tone tuning, we know that a D flat is the same as a C sharp. We only call them one or the other based on what key you're playing in. But back before the music theory gods decided to condense our musical system down to 12 notes, these were two different notes entirely. In 31 EDO, the sharp is a fifth of a tone down from the flat. So a D flat is, and a C sharp is, These are indeed different notes. If we look back at the 31 EDO tuning wheel here, these colored bars show us where the notes would fall on 12 EDO. So if this is C, the intersection of this bar shows us where the next semitone up would be in 12 tone tuning. As we can see in 31, the D flat sits just above the 12 tone tuning D flat and the C sharp so it's a little more below it. So even if you just wanted to play chromatically in this mapping, you end up with a more precise and richer sound in a lot of ways. These differences may seem non-existent at first, but the more you tune your ear to hear, you know, the difference between a simple major third in this tuning, the more it starts to poke out. More importantly, I feel like even before your brain starts to quantify these differences, the subconscious is picking it up. It feels different. You know, there's a resonance to it that is very palpable. But obviously, once you start drifting away from the chromatic notes, the bigger the difference is when you play in context with them. So let's take a look at some of the new triads we have access to. Okay, so we've got our natural F major triad here. And our F minor triad here. But by dropping that A flat, a fifth of a tone down to the G sharp, we get what is called a sub minor chord. It's a different flavor, almost feels deeper in a way. We can also play a neutral third, which sits between the natural minor and the major triad. The third here can be seen as a doubly augmented second which takes us up to a G double sharp. We can also play a super major by going a fifth of a tone up from the major third, which takes us to the B double flat. So we've got the sub minor, the natural minor, the neutral third, 
the major third, and the super major. Now, some of those can sound a little off by themselves, but using these chords in context with others is really where they find their use. Also, I think most of us have just spent a lifetime tuning our ears to 12 tone equal temperament. But the more you expose your ears to these new intervals, the more you start to hear their beauty and see their potential. So let's try to do a little something here incorporating a sub minor and a super major. So this is just a glimpse at this mapping. You know, countless videos could be made to uncover the depths of just this one layout. Not to mention all the other ones that are beloved by many and all the new ones that folks are devising up. We will certainly be covering more on the 31 EDO mapping as well as others. And I will be bringing in microtonalists to help us explore all that. So stay tuned, we'll see you then.